Just because you bought RAM that's rated at 3800, 4000, 5000, or whatever speed, doesn't necessarily mean your computer can run it stably at that speed. It's not uncommon to enable your RAM's XMP and then see nothing but a black screen. Or your computer boots up fine, but then while you're playing games or running other applications, you're greeted by the infamous blue screen of death, or your program randomly crashes to the desktop. I'm not 100% certain about this because I'm not a memory expert. But my understanding is what's going on is the memory controller on your CPU isn't capable of running at your RAM's rated XMP speed. The memory controller is what manages all of the data going to and from your RAM. XMP, as I assume you know, is a form of overclocking. When you apply an XMP, you're overclocking your RAM. And while your RAM is rated to operate at that speed, you are now also overclocking your memory controller, which is built into your CPU, and it may or may not be able to run at that speed. If your RAM's XMP pushes your memory controller faster than it's capable of running, or pushes it right to its limits, then you're going to have stability issues, which will manifest themselves as black screens, blue screens, random crashes, as well as other system weirdness. So what can we do to fix it? If you simply disable XMP in your motherboard BIOS, that will fix the problem. But now you're running the RAM you paid a premium for at its base speed, which I don't think many people are going to be uh, too happy with. Also, there are some of you saying, I can't even get into my BIOS. After enabling XMP, all I get is a black screen, and I can't do anything. Well, let's start with you guys first, and then we'll talk about what we can do to get at least some of the performance that you paid for back out of your RAM. If you're experiencing a black screen, you're probably freaking out right now, thinking you just bricked your motherboard or your RAM or something. Don't worry, everything is fine. You just need to disable the XMP. And since we can't get into our BIOS right now to do that, we're going to need to clear our motherboard's CMOS. The CMOS is the chip on your motherboard where all your settings for stuff like your CPU clock speed, boot device, RAM speed, and a lot of other stuff is stored. When we clear the CMOS, it will reset all of that stuff back to its default factory settings. First, we'll want to shut our computer's power off and unplug the power cord. You're then going to have to open your computer up. Some motherboards have a clear CMOS button on the motherboard somewhere, uh, but most do not. So most likely you're going to have to do this one of two ways. The first is to use the clear CMOS pins on your motherboard. You may need to consult your motherboard manual to locate them, but this is what they look like. Simply bridge these pins with the tip of a screwdriver or some other conductive metal object for five to 10 seconds, and that should do the trick. The second way is to remove this round battery here on your motherboard. This battery provides power to the CMOS chip, allowing it to store all your custom BIOS settings, like your RAM's XMP. Uh, pop this battery out for 30 seconds or so, and that should kill the power to the CMOS long enough to reset everything back to default. Just FYI, your motherboard's clear CMOS pins and battery are likely going to be hidden behind your graphics card. So if you don't see them right away, you're going to need to remove your graphics card to get to them. If you don't know how to do that, I have a graphics card upgrading video popping up in the cards right now uh, and linked in the video description that shows how to both remove and install a graphics card that should help. Okay, now that we can boot into our BIOS again, let's see what we can do about getting at least some of that RAM performance back we paid for. Just so you know, this is going to be a quick and dirty tutorial because RAM overclocking is not my thing. If you want to get a more in-depth tutorial on manually overclocking your RAM, uh, where you adjust the RAM speed, timings, and the voltage, and all that stuff, there are other videos on YouTube you're more than welcome to check out. I'm one that really only uses XMP because it makes overclocking your RAM effortless, basically providing you a one-step toggle switch, allowing you to skip the oftentimes very time-consuming trial and error tweaking that is involved with RAM overclocking. 
Uh, so anyway, my quick and dirty solution to the XMP crashing and blue screen problem is to uh, first enable our RAM's XMP. Uh, before saving and exiting though, we want to go into our BIOS's advanced mode. Go to the AI tweaker here, select memory frequency, and here we have a list of a bunch of different RAM speeds. Uh, some higher than our RAM is rated at, and others lower. The problem we're trying to solve is due to our RAM speed being too high. So I'm going to pick the speed one step down from my RAM's XMP speed, and then exit BIOS and save the settings. I'll then load up a game or other application where I was experiencing crashing problems or whatever and see how it goes. If it crashes again, then I'll go back into my BIOS and bump the memory frequency down one more notch and repeat the process until things run stably. At this point, if you really want to try to get the most performance possible and you're willing to spend the time doing it, you can adjust the timings and the voltage and stuff. Uh, but I've only very briefly dabbled in that kind of stuff, so I ain't gonna touch it in this video. There are plenty of great RAM overclocking guides on the internet though, so you shouldn't have any problem finding one. Thanks for watching, and the uh, best of luck to you.